God bless you in this beautiful evening. Here's your friend Daniela once again with the prophetic word straight from heaven. Before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to come before your presence, to be able to hear what heaven is saying to the earth today. I pray, God, that whoever this word is for, they're able to receive it and it falls on good soil, that it plants in them a seed of hope and that they know that if they act in obedience, the best is yet to come for them. I bless every watcher in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to quickly tell you a dream that God gave me today. Today was a wonderful day for me. I went to the prayer mountain here in Dallas, Texas, and I spent almost all morning fasting, praying, receiving deliverance because honestly, I'm desperate to hear what God is saying. I fasted once I got home. I got a little sleepy, so I took a nap. And after that nap, God gave me a dream. I personally don't necessarily speak a lot about spouses and kingdom marriages because i'm a single woman but this word is for you so i had a dream in which i was at home and i was desperate i was in a bad mood because my husband and i in the dream were arguing we were fighting and i remember that in the dream i prayed and i fasted and i asked god to please give me the opportunity to be able to see my husband one more time so that i could do things right after that prayer in the dream i remember that out of nowhere my husband the mother and the sister came to my home i was speaking with my mother and my mother said hey i don't know if you should go speak with him because you don't know where he has been all day but i got the courage and I said, you know what, I'm gonna give this a try. Nothing is gonna get in between what God has to do for me. As I was speaking to my mom, my mom was sitting here and my mother-in-law was a little bit above. I turned around and I went into the car. I remember that when we were in the car, I was sitting at the front seat. And as I was sitting there, I remember that I was dressed in old clothes. I was wearing some crazy glasses, a weird shirt. I just looked a mess. And I turned around and I looked at my husband in the dream and he was asleep in the car. We were driving to the mall and once we got there, I remember that my mother-in-law in the dream, she was purchasing beautiful scarves, beautiful head wraps that were $4,000. And my humble self, I was like, hey, let me try to buy some too, but I couldn't afford it. After that, I went into the room, I went into a room and again, I was in this just hysterical, stressed out uh, attitude. Then this woman comes into the room and she gives me this nasty cup of coffee. She tells me to my face that the coffee, the coffee had been done wrong, but that I should drink it. So I asked her, hey, if what I'm wearing, is it okay? Do I look good? And she knew I didn't look good, but she lied on my face and she said, yeah, yeah, you look fine. And then she left. After that, my husband in the dream came back into the room and I remember that we were speaking about trying to fix the relationship and turns out that he had been like cheating on me. He had been hurting me. And I asked him, I said, how many times have you been doing this? He turned into this, I'll be honest with you, like this ugly man. He had like acne and he got like, he was like overweight and he started crying and he said clearly seven times and he got up and he was trying to leave. And I said, no, 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 don't leave. I love you and I forgive you. And that was the end of such an intense dream. I'll be the first to say that after that dream, I woke up and I asked God for forgiveness because I said, God, I wasn't really sure what the dream meant, but I spent all afternoon today just meditating in the in the Bible and asking God for the revelation. And God has spoken to me. And today God is telling you, your kingdom spouse is waiting on you to get it right. Let's go ahead and speak about every part of the dream. So at the beginning of the dream, we have the argument between me and my spouse spiritually god is letting you know you and your kingdom spouse aren't on the same page it could be that you are still dealing with sin or your spouse is still dealing with sin i don't know if you guys remember but i posted a video a couple of days ago in which i was letting you guys know what god needed you to do in order to receive the next level the pure things that god wants to give you god said you need to clean everything out of your house and god is telling me today there's a group of people that 
heard and have been listening to this but have not acted in obedience okay you have not acted in obedience you have been saying oh but i like this shirt but i like these pants let me explain something to you when you're asking God, you're not asking God for just any type of man. You're not asking God for just any type of woman. You're asking God for a special person to come into your life and break generational curses. You cannot expect to receive something that's pure and holy when you're dressed in your old clothes from your past. The same clothes, and I'm again, I'm just going to keep it real. The same clothes you used to go to the club with, the same clothes you used to fornicate in, the same bed mattress that you used to lie in depression and cry god is telling you i'm doing a new thing and everything that you used to wear that carries mystery that has the leftovers of your process has to go maybe you're asking me hey i don't even know if that's biblical let me read you a bible verse the bible says in Zechariah 3 4 the angel said to those who were standing before him take off his filthy clothes then it says then he said to joshua see i have taken away your sin and I will put fine garments on you. In other words, your clothes is associated with sin. God is trying to give you something pure. And God is never going to allow, all right, something that's holy to be in an unholy place. Y'all need to remember what happened when they tried to touch the tabernacle of the promise of God. The person died. Things that are holy, God is going to protect them. And I know that you've been fasting, you've been praying, you've been asking God. And God is showing you this video to tell you, I want to give you this, but you need to be obedient and let those things go. I tell you today with the love of God, how worth, how much more is important a shirt, you know, a phone that you used to watch, God knows what. That you can't let that go for you to be able to receive the new thing that God wants to give you. And I tell you this from experience. Last night, just again, because I'm never going to tell you something that God has administered to me. Last night, I, I had a, a spiritual attack. I was sleeping on my bed. I have been fasting. I have been praying. I have been, um, I've been separating myself for God because I'm trying to hear what God has to say for me. And I, something like punched me in the stomach. And I woke up and I started rebuking the devil. I said, hey, you ain't got no authority in my room. But I was so upset because I said, God, how did they even have authority permission to touch me? And that's when God told me there is still something in your room that you haven't got, gotten rid of. And it's true. There is something in my room that I hadn't let go that I'm going to let go tomorrow. I already told someone to come pick it up because I said, I'm not messing with God. And that is the attitude that God needs you to have. Why? Remember, I was in the car at the front seat. It's just so much in this dream. There is a prophet of, of God in, in YouTube and she made a video and she said that God is getting ready to bring people together that you wouldn't see together normally. Rich woman with a poor man, poor uh, woman with a rich man, people of high class with people of low class. And that is what the dream was showing me. My mom was uh, like a little bit lower than the mother-in-law in the dream. And I'll be honest, I come from a hum humble family, but God is telling you today, he's trying to bring you together with people that are going to change your generation. All right. You're getting ready to walk into the God chose you to break the generational curses. But here we are lingering with the things from the past and said, God, and God is saying, I, I can't give it to you like that. I need you to be made new. Now, when I turned around and my, my husband in the dream was asleep, God is telling you, your husband can't see you. You probably already know this man. You probably already know your wife, but because you're wearing that same, the same old clothes, I'm not saying now go to Gucci, go to, you know, the, the most expensive store and buy the fanciest clothes. No, but be able to separate a good amount of, of funds for you to be able to buy something new that you could reflect that I'm a new creature in Jesus Christ. You probably already know your spouse, but they can't see you as, oh, this is who God has sent for me. My, my your, your spouse is asleep right now. They're waiting for you to awaken, waiting for you to say, hey, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about the person that I want God to bring me close to. Again, when I was at the mall, my mother-in-law was buying expensive things. You're going to be able to walk into wealth. It's not about money. It's about breaking generational curses. 
and the things that your mom had to deal with, your aunts had to deal with, God is saying, because you want something different, I am going to make you walk into something different. But you have to be willing to take it. Amen? Now, I went into the room, and God gave me this specific revelation, too, about the woman that came and gave me the nasty coffee. God has been ministering my heart, y'all, to not drink food from just any, or eat food or drink stuff from any, from just any restaurant. And at first, I was a little hesitant. I was like, God, it's just coffee. It's just a drink. Until God started telling me, no. Look what, look what. It's just it's just God is good. Look what Revelation 2.20 says. It says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By, by her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Eating of food sacrificed to idol is the food of cer certain restaurants. And you need to ask the Holy Spirit to give you the sermon. The food of rest certain restaurants that you don't know what they do before they serve it to you. You don't know what the owners, who the owners are praying to. You don't know who is their God. Those restaurants that, that you really don't know where that food comes from. So you're literally eating food that has been sacrificed to idols. And then you want to ask yourself, why do I always have headaches? Why can't I lose weight? Why is my skin the way that it is? Why doesn't my hair grow? All of these things are a result of poor eating habits that are literally poisoning you. The fact that the woman, y'all need to hear this. Hallelujah. The fact that the woman told me to my face, yeah, this coffee is done wrong. It's God letting you know in the name of Jesus is God letting you know, you know where you shouldn't be eating. You know what you shouldn't be intaking, but still you're being disobedient and that is blocking your blessing. That is blocking your blessing. In the last video, I've been posting a couple of videos this last couple of days. God has been telling you, you need to fast. You need to separate your stomach. You can't be filled up with this nasty food when God is trying to give you revelation. So God is telling you today, separate yourself from those poor eating habits, that bad food that is literally poisoning you and is causing you disease. Okay? Now, the end of the, the dream is really important. So you guys go ahead and hear this out. The fact that my husband came in the dream, my husband from the dream came in the room and he confessed to me sins or, or things that he was doing against me. You know, I asked God why I had that dream. I was like, God, I'm not even married. You know, and I was like, do you mean to tell me that like I'm about to get hurt or something? And God spoke to me because God has been speaking to me regarding this for the last couple of days. And God spoke to me about forgiveness. So there is a story and God gave me this verse in Matthew 18, 21. I have the verse right here. I'm only going to read uh, verse 20, my, Matthew 18, 21. It says, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall we forgive? Shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times in the dream. I'm going to uh, explain one more time. My husband came in the room and he told me, I have done these things seven times and he was ready to leave. And I said, no, 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 don't leave. I love you and I forgive you. The rest of the story says that there was a servant in the Bible who owed and had debt with the king. The king called to the servant and said, hey, pay me my money. But the servant begged the king to please forgive the debt. The king had pity on the, the servant and forgave the debt. Now the servant went out and he had somebody that owed him money. That person begged the servant to forgive and the servant did not forgive this other person. When other people saw this, they told on the servant to the king. The king called the servant and said, you're going to be tormented for what you did until you're able to pay your debt. So God is saying to you today, people of God, and I tell you this with the love of God, because God has been dealing with that with me personally. God is saying you need to forgive the people that have done you dirty, the people that you, people that you love. The fact that it was my husband, it wasn't just a stranger. It was, you know, the person that's not supposed to betray you, the person that's not supposed to hurt you. God is telling you, I know that they have hurt you. Okay, God sees your pain. 
God sees your family that hurt you, your best friend that betrayed you, your cousins, the pastors that hurt you. God sees that. But he's asking you today to forgive them. The same way you're willing to forgive them, God is going to forgive you. And why are you going to forgive them? Because after you're able to forgive, God's going to give you a new heart. God wants to heal you. God doesn't want you to walk with your kingdom spouse with pain. Why? Because you're going to project that onto them. Here, God is bringing you someone with a pure heart, a clean slate for you to start new, but you're filled with junk from your past. You're going to start getting angry at this person who's done nothing to you simply because you haven't forgiven completely. You're not going to forgive by drinking. You're not going to forgive by doing drugs. You're not going to forgive by going out all the time. The only way you're going to be able to receive forgiveness is in the presence of God. That's why Jeremiah says, heal me and I shall be healed. Your heart needs healing. And you're going to be able to have the attitude that I had in my dream. And that's what I've been praying God to help me with. I've been telling God, God, help me be able to forgive. In the dream, I told this my husband, hey, don't leave. I forgive you because I love you. And that is the attitude that Jesus would have. Jesus would forgive anyone that would do him a certain type of way because he knew that in forgiveness, we find blessing. And God wants to forgive you for what you have done. Nobody's perfect. I know that what they did to you it hurt you and you, you're clinging on to that. But God wants to set you free. And God wants to give you a better future for you to have so much joy that the things in the past, you're going to be like, that, that was just a time in my life. God changed all my sadness into joy. That's what you're ready to get to walk into. Okay, so take this prophetic word to the presence of God and let him give you confirmation. I'm going to put down the links, the uh, Bible verses below. So you guys can meditate in this because I know that your kingdom spouse is waiting for you. Your kingdom, the purpose that God has for you is not going to be just any marriage of two people that are cute together. No, people coming together to open a church, people coming together that are going to be pastors, people that are going to break generational curses. This is what God is getting ready to do with you very soon. So let's take this word. Let's be obedient to God. Let's let go of our past because the things that are to come, the blessings that are going to come are going to be so big that they're not going to compare to your past. Always remember what I tell you guys. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. God bless you. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. I am starting a new, just obeying the Lord, trying to be a voice of heaven um, and be someone that could guide you into your purpose because God is trying to bless you. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you. God loves you. You're special to him. And again, the best is yet to come. I will see you next time. God bless you.